Gentlemen, our reporter at ringside is our peripatetic chronicler of the boxing scene, Howard Cosell. Okay, Howard. Thank you very much, Jim McKay. And Jim has told you very quickly about the two fights we'll be seeing here in the great showroom of the spanking new International Hotel in Las Vegas. Up in the ring right now is that young American who carried the flag about the ring in Mexico City when they won the gold medal in the heavyweight classification. You're looking at George Foreman right now. He's preparing to go against a fellow named Kid Hazelton. Now, maybe you never heard of Kid Hazelton, but most people have never heard of Kid Hazelton. He was born in London. He's had seven professional fights. He's won five, and he's lost two. And uh, he is six feet, seven inches tall, weighs, as you just heard the public address announcers say, only 189 pounds. George Foreman is in utterly superb condition. He weighs 214 and a half pounds. He is six feet, three and a half inches tall. He is yet to be 21 years of age. And he appears to me, through the time that I've known him, to have developed, if he didn't have it to begin with, the dedication that will be necessary if he is in the ultimate to become the heavyweight champion of the world. Foreman has had 10 professional bouts since that day in Mexico City when he defeated Chapulis the Russian. And this will be his 11th, and he will be fighting again because Dick Sadler, his canny manager, is keeping him working against just the right opponents as he keeps developing toward in the ultimate first-class contendership in the heavyweight division. So he'll be fighting next on December 16th at the Miami Beach Convention Hall against somebody named Levi Forty. When I heard about that, I thought quickly he might be related to our brilliant but diminutive producer, Chet Forty, not so. This is George Foreman. He has a marvelous left, a truly powerful crunching left. He's got a good right, very strong in all departments. What he needs is polish. He's been learning how to slip punches. He's been learning how to move. He's been learning how to adjust to an opponent. And as he learns these things, I repeat, he is destined, I think, to become one of the great ones. Whether or not Hazelton can offer any opposition tonight remains to be seen. This bout will be starting momentarily in Nevada. The referee does not join in the scoring of a fight. Three judges score the fight, and the scoring system is on a five-point must to the winner per round. There'll be a mandatory eight count, three knockdowns within the round, and this fight will end the fight. That will not be true of the main event, Sonny Liston against Leotis Martin. We'll talk more about that later. And counting continues here in Nevada after the bell. Referee is named Dave Pearl, the judges Art Lurie, Mike Petrovich, and Ralph Mosa. Counting on the knockdowns will be Buzz Massa. The timer is Ray Lassard, and of course there is a physician in attendance, Dr. Donald Romeo, an experienced boxing physician. We await the start of this bout. There's the bell for round one, and it's George Foreman in the blue trunks and Kid Hazelton fighting out of Los Angeles in the red trunks. Foreman so far, as you can see, very cautious, but watch that left. Hazelton was hurt a little bit with the first left to the upper chest. There, he was hurt with that right to the midsection, as you saw. He's in trouble right now, immediately. Bob Kid Hazelton. A Londoner fighting out of Los Angeles against George Foreman, our Olympic gold medals. Foreman belaboring Hazelton and down he goes. Hardly an inspiring op opponent. But once again, this is the way fighters are developed in boxing. About to stop. My clock makes it one minute, 27 seconds of the first round. I think we'll hop into the ring to talk a bit with young George Foreman as he wins his 11th professional fight, but not a bout that will remain distinguished in his pugilistic career yet to come. Yeah, 
Now well, I know when they With my IB unconnected, you'll have to signal me. All right, Georgie. First, let's Dick, let Dick Sadler put that robe around you to keep you warm. But as a matter of fact, I don't see how you could have worked up any warmth. The opponent was so easy. Isn't that true? Not easy. I was just lucky. I'm just a hard. I was just hard on him. He wasn't even. He was a good professional fighter. Uh, and I won. You sure did one win. <laughs> My clock made it one minute, 27 seconds of the first round. Uh -huh. But honestly, Dick, the cold fact is, and I think we can tell the truth as we bring in Dick Sadler, the manager, you're bringing George along the right way, the right opponents, until he develops the skills that will make him a frontline contender. Isn't that true? Well, I appreciate your thinking. A lot of people have different opinions, hard, but I, we do the best that we can, and it'll take George a little time, and there's no shortcuts to success, and nothing but time will make it advisable. How much time will it take? Oh, we're looking at your knockout now. Take a look at the monitor, George, and talk over it. Well, I'm just stalking the guy. He's a little lurid. I'm just, I'm not warm yet, so I'm trying to knock his punches down and give him what I learned. I'm getting closer and closer, and he threw a hook there, which... Yeah, watch, you come in with a left to the upper chest now. Well, he's tall, and I got to aim low. I got to aim, you know, where I can hit. So I'm pairing the punches, so like Jack Johnson. Notice that jab. Let's go. <laughs> Now you're really giving it to him. Well, I got a couple lucky punches in that time. That one to the midsection really hurt him. That hurt him. I think that's what won the fight. Those were a couple of wild punches, but they're in the right place. Yeah, this guy really came to fight. But I was the lucky. I don't know why you keep telling me you're lucky. You're just much too good for that lad. I congratulate you on the victory. And I tell you this, George, the way you're coming along, it may not be too much longer before you'll be fighting the very good ones. Good luck. Hey, thanks a lot, Howard. George Foreman, of course, the Olympic gold medalist who had such an easy time knocking out Kid Hazelton in a minute 27 seconds of the first round. Coming up, a man you're going to be very curious about seeing after all these years. Charles Sonny Liston, and he'll be going against Leotis Martin. We'll be back with more action at ringside in just one moment. Once again, we're back at ringside, as you can see, and I'm trying to get my earphone piece together here. We're going to be having a preliminary bout in just a couple of minutes, but I do want to tell you in more detail now about Charles Sonny Liston, because most people in this country have the uh, memory of an image of invincibility. You remember it, of course, the baleful stare, the scary atmosphere of the training camp as he skipped rope to the incessant feet of the night train record, the way trainer Willie Reddish pounded the medicine ball into his stomach to show the invulnerability, and so on. We'll see how much of that he has left against a trial horse in Otis Martin. That fight will be...